फीटल और नियोनेटल फिजियोलॉजी आज डिस्कस करेंगे चैप्टर 84 है गाइटन का एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ एंडोक्राइन एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव फिजियोलॉजी सो यूनिट नंबर 14 आज खत्म होगा मेरा नाम है आसिफ कुरैशी आप देख रहे हैं डॉक्टर आसिफ लेक्चर्स अ कंप्लीट डिस्कशन ऑफ फीटल डेवलपमेंट फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ चाइल्ड इमीडिएटली आफ्टर बर्थ एंड ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट थ्रू द अर्ली ईयर्स ऑफ लाइफ लाइज विद इन The province of formal course in obstetrics and pediatrics. So basically, यहाँ पे ये बता रहे हैं कि actual आपको जो पूरा baby formation, उसके बाद delivery के बाद जो development होनी है, जो growth and development के phases हैं, वो actually आप obs and gynae और gynae तो खैर कम obs में पढ़ेंगे और peds में ज़्यादा पढ़ेंगे, लेकिन कुछ basic physiological principles जो आज इस video में आप सीखेंगे, they will help you understand pediatrics obst and also one thing which they have not mentioned is uh, embryology which is very much interlinked with the early developmental things lekin aaj ki video mein we are going to talk about some very basic physiological principles which will help you understand the uh, neonatal and fetal physiology aap note karenge is chapter mein ki almost all of this chapter is in the blue box uh, uska reason ye hai ki this is all clinically associated information obs पीड्स और एम्ब्रियोलॉजी के साथ ये लिंक्ड है है ये फिजियोलॉजी की बुक में आई थिंक इट्स वेरी रेलेवेंट टू गो थ्रू दिस यू नो ब्लू बॉक्सेस ताकि आपको फीचर और न्यूरेटल फिजियोलॉजी के कुछ बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स अच्छे से समझ में आ जाए सो हेडिंग वाइज हम करते हैं वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट थिंग इज ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फीचर्स प्योर एम्ब्रियोलॉजी का टॉपिक है the placenta and fetal membranes initially develop far more rapidly than the fetus so initial aapko pata hai ki embryogenesis ke days mein uh, placental system membrane system ye kafi fast rapid grow karta in fact during the first 2 to 3 weeks after implantation of the blastocyst the fetus remain almost microscopic yani khud fetus mein itni growth nahi hoti uska reason bhi hai na pehle ye make sure kiya jata hai ki placental aur membranous jo structures hain wo acche se develop ho jaye reason being kyunki yahan nutrition honi hai na to nutrition ka pehle bandobast ho jaye fir growth to ho hi jayegi and therefore initially the embryo itself remains miniature theek hai acha ji at 12 weeks the length is about 10 cm 20 weeks only 20, uh, 25 cm and at the term it is um, uh, which is at 40 weeks around 53 cm which is equal to 21 inches because the weight of the fetus is approximately proportional to the cube of length the weight increases almost in proportion to the cube of the age of the fetus so that's how it is so two hai to uska cube four hai to uska cube baral दीज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट नंबर फॉर यू रिमेम्बर पीड्स में तो ये बहुत पूछते हैं गायनी में एम्ब्रियो में ये इट्स एन इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग नोट दैट इन फिगर एटी फोर वन दैट द वेट रिमेन्स मिनिक्यूल मिनिस्क्यूल ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट ट्वेल्व वीक्स इट रिमेन्स वेरी वेरी स्मॉल एंड रीच इज अबाउट वन पाउंड ओनली एट द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी थ्री वीक्स दस ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट ट्राइमिस्टर ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी एक्चुअली दिस इज द टाइम लास्ट ट्राइमिस्टर ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी जहां फीचर्स जो है वो रैपिडली वे इंगेज करता है वेट गेन करता है और सो द टू मंथ बिफोर बर्थ द वेट एवरेज इज अबाउट थ्री पाउंड वन मंथ बिफोर बर्थ इट एवरेज इज अबाउट फोर पॉइंट फाइव पाउंड सो दीज नंबर आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेम्बर आई थिंक दे आर गिवेन समेयर इन अ डायग्राम सो दिस इज वेर इट इज यू सी अप टिल दिस पॉइंट इट इज सच लिटिल वेट यू सी वेरी वेरी लिटिल वेट एंड लैंड बट एज कंपेयर to the i mean when it goes towards the later half of the pregnancy then you see increase in weight so there you are seeing weight on the right side of the y axis okay so weight catches up later on okay so that's an important uh, general concept jahan aapko ye baat samajhni hai ki weight gain major hoga during the last uh, which is what we call the third trimester of pregnancy development of the organ system within one month after fertilization of the ovum the gross characteristics of all different organs of the fetus have already begun to develop and during the next two months yeah two to three months most of the details of the different organs are already established beyond four months the organ of the fetus are grossly the same as that of the neonate so char mahine ke baad jo bachcha paida hona hai usme jo organ system honge wo baby mall most already vaise developed hote hain however cellular development in each organ is usually far from complete and requires the remaining 5 months so 
बेसिक स्केलेटन जो है ऑर्गन का वो जनरेट हो जाता है मेन ऑर्गन की शेप बन जाती है बट जाहिर उनमें डिफरेंट सेल्स ने अभी न सिर्फ ये डिवाइड होना है बल्कि मेच्योर भी होना है इवन एट बर्थ सर्टन स्ट्रक्चर लैक फुल डेवलपमेंट पर्टिकुलरली द नर्वस सिस्टम माइलिनेशन के इशूज होते हैं वो कम्प्लीट होने में टाइम लगता है किडनीज लिवर सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम द ह्यूमन हार्ट बिगिन बीटिंग एज अर्ली एज द फोर्थ वीक आफ्टर फर्टिलाइजेशन सो इतना अर्ली ह्यूमन हार्ट की फर्स्ट बीच स्टार्ट हो जाती है एंड इनिशियल रेट जो है दैट इज सिक्सटी फी फाइव बीट्स पर मिनट दिस रेट इंक्रीज इज स्टेडली लेटर ऑन टू हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी बीट्स पर मिनट जस्ट बिफोर बर्थ रेड ब्लड सेल्स न्यूक्लियटेड रेड ब्लड सेल्स बिगिन टू बी फॉर्म इन दॉक सैक इनिशियली एंड मीजोथीरियल सेल्स ऑफ द प्लेसेंटा एज अर्ली एज थर्ड वीक ऑफ फीचर डेवलपमेंट This is followed one week later by the formation of non-nucleated RBCs by fetal mesenchyme. So, red, जैसे heart का मैंने आपको बताया, fourth week पे beating start हो जाती है, ऐसे red blood cell की development start हो जाती है इतना early. At six weeks, the liver begins to form blood cells, and in the third month, the spleen and the lymphoid tissue of the body begin forming the blood cells as well. Finally, from the third month on, the bone marrow gradually becomes principal source. So you see the shift of organs is starting from the yolk sac and then ultimately to the bone marrow. ये भी याद रखना आपके लिए important है. Respiratory system respiration cannot occur during fetal life because there is no air ना. आपके lungs को inflate होने के लिए air होना चाहिए. जबकि baby में तो air है नहीं. There is only amniotic fluid. However, attempted respiratory movements do take place at the beginning of the first trimester. Tactile stimuli and fetal asphyxia especially cause these attempted. So these are only attempted premature movements which are trying to inflate the lungs, but it never happens because there is no air. During the last three to four months of pregnancy, the respiratory movements of the fetus are mainly inhibited for reasons unknown, and the lungs remain almost completely deflated. Okay, यानि ये बिल्कुल खुले भी नहीं होते, वो बारा बिल्कुल पिचका हो, वो बारा बगार हवा का. Lungs आपके ऐसे होते हैं. Um, the inhibition of respiration during the later months of fetal life prevent filling of the lung with the fluid and debris or meconium bagara kyunki agar ye is stage par uh, soche na zara inflate hue to usme sara kachra hi bharega liquid bagara jayega amniotic fluid wo hum chahte nahi hai ki jaye what happens to the nervous system most of the reflexes of the fetus that involve the spinal cord and even the brain stem are present by third to fourth month aap dekh rahe hain kitna early stages of pregnancy mein structures apni jagah par hain However, nervous system function that involve the higher centers, cerebral cortex, such as, वो later stage of development, वो early नहीं होता, ठीक है? Even it continues to about a year post nearly. जो बच्चा पैदा होता है, वो full cerebral cortex, high higher centers or myelinization, myelinization जो है, myelin formation of the tracts, उनके साथ born नहीं होता, it takes about a year. Gastrointestinal tract by mid pregnancy, the fetus begins to ingest and absorb large quantities of amniotic fluid. So basically, it starts eating food, right? So it's not going to be going in its body. By that time, small quantities of meconium are continually formed in the GI tract and excreted to kind of feces, so swallowing and feces. Meconium is composed partly of the residue from the swallowed amniotic fluid and also contains mucus. So basically, I explain to the students that the food eating system starts to get very fast. Kidneys begin to excrete urine in the second trimester, yani three months after birth, and fetal urine accounts for about seventy to eighty percent of the amniotic fluid that the baby is bathing in. Abnormal kidney development or severe impairment of the kidney function, say, ye hoga ki urine nahi banega, amniotic fluid nahi banega, amniotic fluid nahi banega reduces the formation of amniotic fluid, oligohydramnios. It can even lead to fetal death. So kidney ka early kaam karna itna zaruri hai. Although the fetal kidneys form urine, the renal control system for regulating fetal extracellular volume, electrolyte balances, and the acid-base balances are non-existent until the late fetal life and do not reach full development until after a few months of birth. So, up to now, our entire story is what? We have different organ systems. We have talked about weight increment. Ki baat ki. Then we talked about circulatory system, respiratory system, nervous system, even GI tract, and we uh, have one single conclusion. Or one single conclusion is that many of the organ system develop very early in the lifetime of the developing embryo. और थर्ड मंथ पे बन रहा है फोर्थ वीक पे बन रहा है वेरी वेरी अर्ली इन द प्रेगनेंसी ऐसा नहीं है बच्चा पैदा होने वाला है तब चीजें बनती है इससे मैं हमेशा फिजियोलॉजी में कहता हूं कि जनरल लेसन इन लाइफ सीखा करें इससे एक आपको लेसन और मिलता है नाइन्थ मंथ पे डिलीवरी होनी है 
लेकिन थर्ड मंथ तक काफी सारी चीजें तैयार हैं सो एक्चुअली आपको इससे लाइफ लेसन ये लेना चाहिए कि बाय द यू नो योर प्लानिंग शुड बी इन सच अ वे कि जो भी आपकी डेडलाइन है उससे काफी पहले आप प्रिपेयर होने चाहिए अपने काम के साथ ओके नाउ फीटल मेटाबॉलिज्म फीटस मेनली यूजेस ग्लूकोज एज अ सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी द फीटस हैज अ हाई कैपेबिलिटी ऑफ स्टोरिंग फैट एंड प्रोटीन व्हिच with much if not most of the fat being synthesized from the glucose so glucose is the key molecule in addition to these general generalities there are special problems of fetal metabolism related to calcium phosphate iron and some inko bhi hum discuss karte hain metabolism of calcium and phosphate um hota ye hai ki if you look at the rate of calcium and phosphate accumulation in fetus it demonstrate that about 22.5 grams of calcium and about uh, roughly the half amount 13.5 of phosphorus are accumulated in average fetus during gestation about one half of these accumulate during the last 4 weeks of gestation which is coincident with the period of rapid ossification now you have more calcium you have more phosphate and it is exactly happening at the time when uh, bones need it they need it for ossification okay and this is exactly the time when there is rapid weight gain also happening now during the earlier part of the fetal life the bones are relatively unossified kyunki calcium aur phosphate ka level high nahi hota and they have mainly only cartilaginous matrix ossification does not occur until after 4 months of pregnancy so basically it's the second part of the pregnancy aap keh lenge ke second trimester or third trimester these are the areas jahan par ossification ho rahi hoti hai basically aur yahi time period hota hai jab baby mein calcium phosphate accumulate hota hai Note especially that the total amount of calcium and phosphate needed by the fetus during gestation represent only about two percent of the quantities of these substances in the mother's bone, and thus the drain of these substances from the mother is minimal. A much greater drain occurs after birth during lactation. ये important paragraph है यार इसमें concept भी बताया है कि देखो ये developing baby है so this is the developing baby for example okay and that is the mother जिसके अंदर ये develop हो रहा है अब यहाँ जो bones वगैरह develop होनी है it will obviously require calcium and phosphate ये कहाँ से आएगा ये mommy से ही आएगा ना mommy में ये चीजें demineralize होंगी bone और उनमें से कैल्शियम और फास्फेट निकल के बेबी में आएगा और बेबी में फिर जो प्रोसेस होगा दैट इज व्हाट वी कॉल द प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑसिफिकेशन तो बेबी में ऑसिफिकेशन होने के लिए मदर में डीमिनरलाइजेशन होनी होगी लेकिन बेबी को जितना भी कैल्शियम फास्फेट चाहिए वो मदर का ओनली टू परसेंट ऑफ द डीमिनरलाइजेशन यानी जितना मदर के पास अगर सौ की मात्रा में कैल्शियम मौजूद है तो उसमें से सिर्फ दो की मात्रा में यूज होगा बेबी के लिए और ये दो बेबी के लिए काफी है सो इट इज नॉट गिविंग मच हार्म टू द मॉमी लेकिन जब लैक्टेशन होती है तो लैक्टेशन में ठीक ठाक कैल्शियम और फास्फेट जो है वो डिमिनरलाइज होते हैं एंड दैट कॉजेज बिगर हार्म ओके सो इफ यू वन मोर टाइम रीड द स्टेटमेंट अगेन See note especially that the total amounts of calcium and phosphate needed by the fetus during gestation represent only about 2% of the quantities of these substances in the mom and therefore the drain of the substance in the mother is minimal okay a much greater drain is observed during lactation accumulation of iron uh, iron accumulates in the fetus even more rapidly than does the calcium and phosphate calcium phosphate second trimester ke baad accumulate hona shuru hote hain iron unse rapidly accumulate hota hai और उसका रीजन है क्योंकि बहुत अर्ली दे स्टार्ट मेकिंग आरबीसीज एंड देयर फॉर हीमोग्लोबिन बनाने के लिए आयरन चाहिए सो एवरीथिंग मेक सेंस इस स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ आयरन आर कंसंट्रेटेड इन द मदर्स यूट्राइन प्रोजेस्टेशनल एंड्रोमेट्रियम इवन बिफोर इम्प्लांटेशन ऑफ द ओवम यानी पहले से तैयारी कर ली जाती है भाई अभी स्टार्ट हुआ भी नहीं है मामला और पहले से आयरन स्टोर होना शुरू हो गया कि कल को रेड ब्लड सेल बनाने होंगे तो आयरन इनफ क्वांटिटी में होना चाहिए वही लाइफ के जनरल प्रिंसिपल के डेडलाइन से काफी पहले काम कर लो अबाउट वन थर्ड ऑफ द आयरन इज फुली डेवलप्ड फीटर्स इन फुली डेवलप्ड फीटर्स इज नॉर्मली स्टोर्ड इन द लिवर द आयरन कैन देन बी यूज्ड बाय द न्यूनेट टू फॉर्म एडिशनल हीमोग्लोबिन सो बेसिकली आयरन का ये पर्पस है टू मेक हीमोग्लोबिन इन द डेवलपिंग आरबीसीज utilization and storage of vitamins the fetus need vitamins equally as much as any adult would need it in general the vitamin function the same in the fetus as they do in the adult aisa nahi ki vitamin c fetus mein kuch aur kaam kar raha hai adult mein kuch aur kaam kar raha hai the b vitamins especially b12 and folic acid are required for red blood cell formation vitamin c is uh, appropriate formation of the intracellular substances such as bone matrix and connective tissue vitamin d is necessary for bone stuff okay if mother has plenty vitamin d in her body fluids larger quantities of vitamin will be sorted because diffusion se move karega the mechanism and function of vitamin e are not very clear in the fetus but it is necessary for normal development agar nahi hoga vitamin e to normal development affect hogi vitamin k 
is important for formation of uh, important factors such as factor 7 prothrombin and other coagulation factors vitamin k is insufficient agar mother mein hoga to masla hai okay factor 7 prothrombin become deficient in the fetus because most vitamin k is formed by the bacterial action in the mom colon mein the neonate has no adequate source of vitamin k for the first week or so uh, of life after the birth yani bachche ko vitamin k sare ka sara basically mama se mil raha tha mom hi usko de rahi thi from her colon ab baby ki jo colon hai wo to bichari naive colon jab bachcha paida ho jata hai to takriban 1 hafte tak uske paas vitamin k nahi hota therefore prenatal storage in fetal liver for at least a small amount of vitamin k derived from mother is helpful in preventing fetal hemorrhage and this is what we do actually to liver mein ye store hota hai thoda bahut adjustment of infant uh, to extra uterine life now that is something which i say is a super important concept ye aise yahan ek choti si heading lagta hai lekin zara soche na yaar aap agar apne upar rakh ke is baat ko soche ki aap kisi ek area mein rehte hain kafi arse tak and that's your beautiful home jisme aap reh rahe hain there is a beautiful surrounding aapke friends hain ek environment hai jiski aapko aadat hai aap suddenly aapko move karna hai yahan se kisi aur area mein job change ho gayi ya whatever you change the country sometimes you change the city sometimes within the city you change the locality बट वो चेंज आसान नहीं होता आपको नए चेंज में अडेप्ट होना पड़ता है एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ एडेप्टेशन इज समाइम्स नॉट इजी अब ये तो कितना बड़ा एडेप्टेशन है बेबी वॉज ऑल द टाइम इन साइड यूट्रस कवरिंग्स में लिपटा हुआ बेहतरीन इन्वायरमेंट कोई काम नहीं करना इवन रेस्पिरेशन नहीं करनी लंग्स को इन्फ्लेट नहीं करना रिलैक्स पड़े हैं प्रोटेक्टेड माँ ने प्रोटेक्ट किया हुआ है हर चीज प्लेसेंटा से मिल रही है एंड नाव सडनली द बेबी इज बॉन्ड Once the the baby baby is born, it's now the extra uterine life. अब बहुत सारे चेंजेस आएंगे बेबी की लाइफ में फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑन सेट ऑफ ब्रीदिंग द मोस्ट ऑब्वियस इफेक्ट ऑन बर्थ इज बेबी प्लेसेंटा का कनेक्शन खत्म माँ से अब उसको न्यूट्रिशन नहीं मिल रही ऑक्सीजन नहीं मिल रही अब रेस्पायरेशन शुरू करनी पड़ेगी सो पॉज ऑफ ब्रीदिंग ऐसा क्या होता है कि बच्चा पैदा होते ही खुद से ब्रीद करना शुरू करता है एक्चुअली आफ्टर नॉर्मल डिलीवरी from a mother whose system has not been depressed by any anesthetic yani a normal sub system hai the child ordinarily begin to breathe breathe within seconds and is a normal respiratory rhythm within less than 1 minute after birth paida hote hi normally saans lena start kar deta hai this promptness with which the fetus begins to breathe indicates that breathing is initiated by sudden exposure to the exterior world yani duniya mein aate hi chal bhai saans lena shuru probably resulting from slightly asphyxiated state that is incident to the birth process and from sensory impulses that originate uh, in the suddenly cooled skin so there are uh, receptors jo temperature change or environmental change ko sense karwate hain at the higher centers and the respiratory centers become active in an infant who does not breathe immediately the body become progressively more hypoxic to oxygen nahi ja raha na body mein and hypercapnic carbon dioxide release nahi ho raha to wo nikalta ja raha carbon dioxide uh, बॉडी के सेल से और बॉडी में अक्यूमुलेट होता जा रहा है विच प्रोवाइड एडिशनल स्टिमुलस टू द रेस्पिरेटरी सेंटर सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स पैदा होते ही बच्चे ने रोना धोना शुरू किया सांस चालू डिलेड और एबनॉर्मल ब्रीदिंग एट बर्थ देन देर इज डेंजर ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया ऑब्वियसली इफ द बेबी इज नॉट ब्रीदिंग वेल देन देर इज हाइपोक्सिक चांसेस ऑक्सीजन नहीं मिलेगी उसको इफ द मदर सिस्टम हैज बिन डिप्रेस बाय जनरल अगर सी सेक्शन है और सिवियर कैटेगरी के ऑपरेशन है जिसमें काफी सारा जनरल एनस्थीजिया यूज किया है तो इन केसेज में बेबी सांस नहीं लेता फॉरन Uh, because of the effect of the anesthesia as many infants who have had head trauma during delivery or who undergo prolonged delivery are slow to breathe as well this can result from two possible factor in a few infants intracranial hemorrhage or brain contusions uh, head trauma ke sath to wo respiratory center ko depress karte hain then probably much more important prolonged fetal hypoxia during uh, delivery can cause serious depression of the rest anything which depresses the respiratory center in the baby will have uh, delayed respiratory beginning in the baby after birth hypoxia may be during delivery because of compression of the umbilical cord premature separation of the placenta excessive contraction ye sari cheezon se oxygen delivery kam ho rahi hai baby ko even before birth डिग्री ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया दैट एन इन्फेंट कैन टॉलरेट यानी कोई हद होगी ना बच्चे ने पैदा हो गया अब फॉरन सांस नहीं ले रहा लेवल ऑफ ऑक्सीजन कम हो रहा है कितना कम होगा तो बहुत डेंजरस है इन एडल्ट फेलियर टू ब्रीथ ओनली फॉर फोर मिनट्स कैन कॉज डेथ फोर मिनट भी ज्यादा है आप जरा अपनी सांस रोक के वैसे ट्राई मत करना लेकिन फोर मिनट तो ये मैक्सिमम बता रहे किसी एथलीट फ्यू सेकंड में आपका हाल खराब हो जाता है बट न्यूनिट्स में सर्वाइव एज लॉन्ग एज टेन मिनट्स विदाउट ब्रीदिंग पर मिनट एंड सीरियस ब्रेन इम्पेयरमेंट ऑफ एन uh you know ensues if breathing is delayed for more than 8 to 10 minutes so this is the time period critical uh 
एक्सपेंशन ऑफ लंग्स इन बर्थ एट बर्थ द वॉल ऑफ द एल्वुलाई आर एट फर्स्ट कोलैप्स बिकॉज़ लंग पूरा डिफ्लेटेड होता है ना पिचका हुआ होता है बिकॉज़ ऑफ द सरफेस टेंशन ऑफ द विस्कस फ्लूइड दैट फिल्स विद देम विद इन देम मोर देन 25 मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्क्यूरी ऑफ नेगेटिव इंस्पिरेटरी प्रेशर इन द लंग्स इज रिक्वायर्ड सो दिस इज द प्रेशर जिससे उसके लंग्स एक्सपेंड होंगे एंड नाउ द एल्वुलाई विल बिकम ओपन एंड वंस दे आर ओपन Uh, further respiration can be affected by relatively weak respiratory movements and fortunately the first inspiration of the normal neonate are extremely powerful they are usually capable of creating you know 60 ka negative pressure taaki pura alveoli sahi se khul jaye khinch ke rakh deta hai alveoli ko bachcha itna zor se rota hai tremendous negative intrapleural pressure requires to open the lung at the onset of the breeding is helped by actually crying mechanism okay to ye bas baat aapne yaad rakhi hai numbers jo diye hai -30 minus -14 never asked in the exams not important for you to remember okay if you want to impress somebody then that's fine otherwise they are not important note that the second breath is much easier pehla saans mushkil uske baad aasan aisi bahut sari cheeze hoti hain jo pehli dafa kafi mushkil hoti hain baad mein aasan ho jati hain sab ki main example nahi de raha na de sakta hu requiring far less negative and positive pressures uh, breathing does not become completely normal until about 40 minutes zahir hai yaar abhi pehla hua hai pehli dafa saans lene shuru kiya aadha pura ghanta to lagega setting mein aate aate hai na respiratory distress syndrome occur when surfect then secretion is deficient or that's a problem in a small number of infants what happens ke khas taur par jo premature infants so waqt se pehle paida ho gaye and infants born um, to mothers who have diabetes mellitus for example or respiratory distress or some other diseases uh, unme surfactant uh, kam hota hai and then the surface tension issues come into play the alveoli of these infants and uh, at death contain large quantities of proteinaceous fluid almost as if the pure plasma has leaked out from the alveoli uh, alve- inside the alveoli from the capillaries the fluid also contain disseminated alveolar cells this condition is called highline membrane disease because mac- ab ye hua ye ki jo alveoli hai usko air se bharna tha but wo sara proteinaceous liquid se bhare hue hain a characteristic finding in respiratory distress syndrome is failure of the respiratory epithelium to produce surfactant a substance which is normally secreted into the alveoli that decreases the surface tension it's very important taki alveoli khule rahe agar the surfactant nahi produce hoga to they will ye uh, uh, collapse ho jayenge pichak jayenge or uh, that's a problem the surfactant secreting cells which are type 2 alveolar cells do not begin to secrete surfactant until 1 to 3 months of gestation or uh, for any reason if surfactant is not produced that is the problem and death can uh, happen circulatory readjustments this is a very important topic to consider embryology mein bhi maine alag se padhaya hai general anatomy mein alag se padhaya hai abhi dobara padhata hu maine aapko bataya ki jab paida hota hai bachcha so there are a lot of adaptations ab tak hum jo baat kar rahe the they were the respiratory adjustments ki usne paida hote hi saans leni hai now there are some major important circulatory readjustments after birth equally as essential as the onset of breathing jo abhi humne baat ki thi Uh, also are important the circulatory adjustments that allow adequate blood flow through the lungs in addition circulatory adjustments during the first few hours of life cause more and more blood flow through the baby's liver which up to this point has little blood flow to describe these readjustments we first consider the anatomical structure to ek dafa dobara yahan pe kuch anatomy batayenge fetal circulation ki and then we will talk about what changes happen after uh, the delivery now is specific anatomical structures of fetal circulation so whatever we now discuss is in the fetal circulation because the lungs are mainly non functional na bachche mein lungs to kaam kar hi nahi rahe hote to jab lungs kaam hi nahi kar rahe ye statement phir ab make sense karna chahiye ki because the lungs are mainly non functional during fetal life and because liver is only partially functional as well it is not necessary for the fetal heart to pump blood through the entire lungs or the liver ab normally ye hota hai ki hamari har heart beat mein kidhar banao yaar koi diagram ki jagah de do Let me generate some jagah here. So usually you die. That your heart, when pump, does it. So with each cycle, your blood obviously uh, from the right side of your heart it goes to the lungs with each circulatory beat. But in the child's lungs, the blood does not go to the lungs because the lungs are pitched. They do not send it there. However, fetal heart must pump large quantities of blood through the placenta. फीटल हार्ट का काम है प्लेसेंटा से कम्युनिकेट करना देयर फॉर स्पेशल एनाटॉमिकल अरेंजमेंट कॉजेज फीटल सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम टू ऑपरेट मच डिफरेंटली देन फ्रॉम द न्यू बॉर्न बेबी फर्स्ट द ब्लड रिटर्निंग फ्रॉम द प्लेसेंटा थ्रू द अम्बलाइकल वेन पासिस 
थ्रू द डक्टस विनोस इज मेनली बायपासिंग द लिवर सो अब ये इंपॉर्टेंट देखो अब आपको ना स्पेशल फीटल सर्कुलेटरी अरेंजमेंट पहले समझने पहला नाम यहां पर आया है डक्टस विनोसिस का सो लुक एट द डायग्राम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लोकेट वेर इज प्लासेंटा सो दिस इज प्लासेंटा प्लासेंटा से जो ब्लड आ रहा है दैर इज इन दम्बलाइकल वेन यहाँ उल्टा मामला है पल्मोनरी वेन की तरह इसको समझिएगा जैसे पल्मोनरी वेन जो कि लंग से आती है उसमें ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड होता है वो रेड से रिप्रेजेंट होती है बिल्कुल ऐसी अम्बलाइकल वेन ऑक्सीजन लेके आ रही है माँ की बॉडी से सो इट इट कंटेन्स ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड देर फॉर इट इज रेप्रेजेंटेड एज रेड सो दिस अम्बलाइकल वेन इज पासिंग थ्रू डक्टस विनर्स एंड देन गेरिंग इन टू वेयर इन टू द हार्ट so that is the first thing that you have to understand ki jo um, umbilical vein se blood aa raha hai that is coming through the placenta passes through the ductus venosus is bypassing the liver ye liver mein distribute nahi kar raha blood ko so this is not distributing any blood in the liver it's just taking it directly to the heart because liver ko zaruri nahi hai so liver is no tension kaam nahi kar raha wahan blood nahi ja raha pehla uh, jo aapko pipeline yaad rakhna hai wo ductus venosus then most of the blood entering the right atrium a blood aage right atrium mein from the inferior vena cava is directed in a straight pathway across the posterior aspect of the right atrium through the foramen ovale directly into the left atrium ab ye ek aur mazey ki cheez aa gayi this is the second bypass system uh, usually ye hota hai adult heart ki main agar baat karu ke राइट साइड पे जो ब्लड आता है फ्रॉम द इंफ्रिया वेना कैवा एंड फ्रॉम एनी अदर यू नो ब्लड वैसल सुपीरियर वेना कैवा वॉर एवर जो डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड राइट साइड पे आता है वो पहले राइट एट्रियम में फिर राइट वेंट्रिकल में उसके बाद पलमुनरी आर्टरी में जाता है पलमुनरी आर्टरी में इसलिए जाता है ताकि लंग्स में जाके वो ऑक्सीजनेट हो जाए अच्छा लेकिन यहाँ ऐसा नहीं हो रहा ना यहाँ पे वॉट्स हैपनिंग कि जितना भी ब्लड राइट साइड ऑफ द हार्ट में आ रहा है यानी राइट एट्रियम में आ रहा है इट इज गोइंग डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द राइट एट्रियम इन टू द लेफ्ट एट्रियम बाय द फॉरम इन ओवेल दस द वेल ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम द प्लेसेंटा एंटर्स मेनली द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द हार्ट ये सारा जो ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड है ये आया शंट होके डायरेक्ट राइट एट्रियम में और राइट एट्रियम से डायरेक्टली वो कहा पहुंच गया इन टू द लेफ्ट एट्रियम और लेफ्ट एट्रियम से फिर वो पूरी बॉडी में सर्कुलेट होने के लिए तैयार है सो राइट साइड में नहीं आ रहा राइट uh, साइड right पे सारा बाईपासिंग सिस्टम चल रहा है इनफैक्ट राइट साइड पे जो ब्लड आया भी वो uh, एक सुराख के जरिए और उस सुराख का नाम आपको याद रखना है फोरम इन ओवेल सो दैट इज शंट नंबर टू पहला शंट डक्टस विनोसेस दूसरा शंट फोरम इन ओवेल अब ब्लड आ गया सारा लेफ्ट एट्रियम के अंदर द ब्लड एंट्रिंग द राइट एट्रियम फ्रॉम द पोस्टियर वेना केवाइज डायरेक्टेड डाउनवर्ड थ्रू द ट्रैक स्पीड वेल इन द राइट वेंट्रिकल द ब्लड इज मेनली डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ऑब्वियसली इज कमिंग इन द राइट एट्रियम From the head region of the fetus, it is pumped by the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. A pulmonary jo artery hai, wo to lungs me jayegi nahi, kyunki lungs to kam nahi kar rahe, hai na? To ab is blood ko bhi aorta me dal diya jata hai through ductus arteriosus. Ye tisra shan. Yani uh, number one, apko ye baat yaad rakhni hai ki jo oxygenated blood aa raha hai through the umbilical vein, it comes in the right side of the heart. That is number one, bypassing the liver. then from the superior vena cava comes in here and uh, uh, from some other veins as well jo deoxygenated blood aa raha into the right atrium it goes straight to the left atrium and then number 3 jo blood right atrium mein aaya aur phir right ventricle mein gaya aur phir wo pulmonary artery mein gaya ab pulmonary artery se usko lungs mein jana chahiye tha lekin lungs kaam nahi kar raha hai to wo chala jata hai ductus arteriosus mein aur direct descending aorta so descending aorta mein ye blood shift kar diya gaya which is still deoxygenated jo head region se aa raha hai Uh, through the two umbilical uh, and then what happens ke ye jo descending aorta hai isse ye blood wapas chala jata hai into the placenta jahan deoxygenated se ye oxygenated hota hai to ye jo sara system hai na ye bilkul main kehta hu ki khichdi system hai jo adults mein and newborn baby mein nahi hota is tarah change ho jata hai mamla kyunki adult system bada simple hai wo aapko maine kai dafa bataya hai ki if this is your heart right side and left side so sara deoxygenated blood aayega right atrium mein wahan se right ventricle mein yahan se lungs mein lungs se oxygenate hoke left atrium left ventricle aorta ye hai hamara system lekin yahan lungs ki circulation khatam nahi ho rahi isi tarah jo gi tract se sara blood liver mein jata hai wo bhi baby mein nahi hota so baby mein liver mein there is no blood going and lungs mein there is no blood going aur is no blood going ke liye kafi sara arrangement karna padta hai aur wo anatomical changes aapko pata hone chahiye theek hai Now this figure is a very important figure. Shows relatively percentages of total uh, blood pumped by the heart that passes through the different vascular circuits of the fetus. Approximately 55% of all the blood 
goes through the placenta leaving only 45% to pass through all tissues of the baby furthermore during fetal life only 12% of the blood flows through the lungs kyunki lungs mein resistance hai and zyada uski blood supply nahi hai uska kaam hi nahi hai na because lungs mein blood ab tab bhejenge jab lungs mein oxygen hogi abhi to lungs pichke hue hain pani se bhare hue hain hai na ab birth par kya hota hai so ye aapko pehle to dekho main bata raha hu bar bar ye video na ye wala paragraph video rok rok ke rewind kar kar ke bar bar pad lo samajh lo dekh lo ek dafa ye concept clear ho jaye to fir is heading pe aana ki बेसिक चेंजेस इन द फीटल सर्कुलेशन आफ्टर बर्थ बेसिकली हमने अलग से डिस्कस कर रखी है ऑलरेडी बट यहाँ पे हम करेंगे ताकि कॉन्सेप्ट कंप्लीट हो जाए डिक्रीज पलमोनरी एंड इंक्रीज सिस्टेमिक वैस्कुलर रेजिस्टेंस एंड बर्थ सो पलमोनरी रेजिस्टेंस डिक्रीज होती है जिससे पलमोनरी सर्कुलेशन खुल जाती है और ब्लड लंग्स की तरफ डायरेक्ट होता है द प्राइमरी चेंजेस इन द सर्कुलेशन एट बर्थ आर फर्स्ट लॉस ऑफ द ट्रेमेंडस ब्लड फ्लो थ्रू द प्लेसेंटा जहर आपने ब्लैकल कॉट काट दिया प्लेसेंटा का ब्लड फ्लो खत्म which approximately doubles the circulation within the fetus or vascular resistance bhi badh jati hai this doubling of the systemic vascular resistance increasing increases the aortic pressure as well as the pressure in the left ventricle and the left atrium yani pure uh, mere circulation mein yahan pe placenta laga hua tha isko maine kaat diya to yahan resistance badh gayi wo resistance phir atrium mein bhi resistance ko badhayegi aur ventricle mein badhayegi second the pulmonary vascular resistance greatly decreases isse lungs ki taraf blood badhna shuru ho jata hai theek hai also in fetal life the hypoxia of the lung causes considerable tonic vasoconstriction of the lung vessels lekin ab kyunki after birth lungs inflate ho gaye hain alveoli mein oxygen aa gayi hai so the blood uh, vascular resistance decreases or uh, all these changes together reduce the resistance to the blood flow through the lungs ब्लड फ्लो की रेजिस्टेंस कम होने का मतलब यह है कि ब्लड फ्लो ज्यादा जाएगा लंग्स की तरफ ओके सो एज मच एज फाइव फोल्ड रिडक्शन होता है विच रिड्यूज द पलमोनरी आर्टरियल प्रेशर एंड राइट वेंट्रिकुलर एंड एटरियल प्रेशर एज वेल ओवरऑल इंपैक्ट ये होगा कि अब लंग्स में ब्लड जाना शुरू हो जाएगा एंड द फोरम एन ओवेल क्लोजेज क्या था फोरम एन ओवेल जो राइट right साइड से यू नो ब्लड को डायरेक्टली लेफ्ट साइड में शिफ्ट कर रहा था अब वो बंद हो गया तो अब राइट साइड से ब्लड ने राइट वेंट्रिकल में ही जाना है एटरियम से the low right atrial pressure and the high left atrial pressure actually causes closure of the foramen ovale theek hai and consequently the small valve that lie over the foramen ovale on the left side of the atrium also closes this opening in two third of the people the valve become adherent to the foramen ovale within a few months to few years uh, forming a permanent closure however sometimes there is a patent foramen ovale throughout the life and uh, that is a disease condition theek hai closure of the ductus arteriosus acha ductus arteriosus kya tha it was also a shunt na it was a shunt which was uh, connecting the pulmonary artery aur se suniye is jumle ko pulmonary artery with the aorta ab ye shunt close ho jata hai ab jab ye shunt close ho jayega to pulmonary artery ka jo blood hai wo aorta mein nahi jayega this is ductus artery ye band ho gaya ab jab blood yahan se jayega to wo definitely lungs mein enter hoga aorta mein enter nahi hoga to डक्टस आर्टरियोसिस बंद होता है और लंग्स में रेजिस्टेंट ब्लड फ्लो की कम होती है तो ब्लड अब रास्ते ही कोई और नहीं है ये पाइप आप यहां से बंद कर दोगे तो एयरटा में तो वो जाएगा नहीं उसने यहीं जाना है पलमोनरी आर्टरीज में सो इट विल एंटर इन राइट एंड लेफ्ट पलमोनरी आर्टरी सिंपली गो टू द लंग्स ओके सो दैट इज वॉट वी कॉल द क्लोजर ऑफ डक्टस आर्टरियोसिस ductus arteriosus closes but for a different reason first increase systemic uh, reasons i am not going to go into detail in biology mein maine bataya hua hai modi modi mein aapko kahani bata di but there is important molecule which you have to remember that is uh, you know associated with the prostaglandin e2 remember this point okay in fetal life the partial pressure of oxygen of the ductus blood is only 15 to 20 mm but it increases to about 100 mm within a few hours after birth further more experiments have shown that degree of contraction of the smooth muscle in the ductus is highly related to the availability of oxygen and that is uh, associated with prostaglandin e2 the cause of the ductus arteriosus closure relates to increased oxygenation of the blood flowing through the ductus as well as the loss of vascular relaxing factor pge2 relax karta hai to wo khula rehta hai ductus aur jab pge2 khatam ho jayega to hua ye ke paidaish ke baad oxygen uh, की मात्रा बढ़ गई डक्टस आर्टरियोसिस से जो ब्लड गुजर रहा है उसमें प्रोस्टाग्लैंडिन ई टू कम हो गया एंड द पेटेंट डक्टस आर्टरियोसिस नाउ क्लोजेस इट इज नो मोर अ पेटेंट चैनल इट क्लोजेस एंड वंस इट क्लोजेस ब्लड गोज नॉट इनटू द एयरटा बट इनटू द लंग्स ओके राइट इन वन ऑफ द सेवरल थाउजेंड इनफैक्ट्स द डक्टस फेल टू क्लोज रिजल्टिंग इन पीडीए पेटेंट डक्टस आर्टरियोसिस The failure of closure has been postulated to result from excessive ductus dilation, 
because uh, the poster gland in E2 is not reduced. Okay. And in fact, administration of endomethacin, which blocks synthesis of prostaglandin, can help uh, for the closure. Because the prostaglandin will inhibit it, and then closure can be facilitated. Closure of ductus venosus, it was bypassing the liver. Na? In fetal life, the portal blood from the fetus abdomen joins the blood from the umbilical vein, and these together uh, pass by way of ductus venosus, bypassing the liver. Immediately after birth, this also closes. So, uh, here will closure. Ho so, these bypass channels were closed. Uh, foramen ovale was one bypass channel. Ductus arteriosus was another bypass channel. Ductus venosus was another bypass channel. All of them uh, close after birth. So, the blood circulation is adult type ho jai after birth. So, these circulatory changes are important. So, up till now, we have talked about respiratory changes. We have talked about circulatory changes. Now, let's talk about the nutrition of neonate. Before birth, the fetus drives almost all its energy from glucose obtained from the mother's blood. Jabke after birth, obviously, there is no connection with mommy's body. Placenta is gone. Uh, what happens? Ke glucose is stored in the body of infant in the form of liver and muscle. Glycogen is now helping the baby. The liver of the neonate is still far from functionally irrigated birth. Yani liver abhi bhi se kaam nahi kar raha, which prevents significant glucose. Nea glucose nahi manega, jo glucose store hua tha, wahi use hoga. Therefore, the infant's body glucose concentration frequently falls in the first few uh, hours to days. As low as 30 to 40 milligram because jitna bhi glucose tha wo use ho raha hai glucose ban nahi raha. Fortunately, appropriate mechanisms are available that allow infant to use its stored fats and proteins as well. And uh, special problems are also frequently associated with getting an adequate fluid supply to the neonate because infant's rate of body fluid turnover averages seven times that of an adult. And the mother's milk supply requires several days to develop. Well, usually one to seven days may enough supply generate nahi from the lactating breast that can be enough for the baby. So for first few days at least the baby is at at its own. Jitna stored liver mein glycogen wo use ho hai. So apni body ki requirements, fat, protein, wo sab use ho hai. Ordinarily, the infant's weight decreases five to ten percent, sometimes even more in the first two to three days of life. And that is the reason. Ke jitne stores the apni body mein wo sab use ho hai. Naya glucose generate nahi ho ra, milk is not ready to provide nutrition, that sort of thing, you know. And that's very, very normal. Um, and then once the milk supply is ample, available, then things become normal. A special functional problems in neonate. An important characteristic of neonate is instability of the various hormonal and the neurological control mechanisms. Or what we have talked about discuss uh, respiratory system, for example. The normal rate of respiration in neonate is about 40 breaths per minute, and tidal air with each breath averages about 16 ml, which results in total minute respiratory volume of 640, uh, about twice as that in relation to the body weight of an adult. The functional residual capacity of infant lung is only one half that of an adult in relation to the body weight. So, uh, I would say not super important paragraph, but anyways, if you are fond of remembering the numbers, then you should go ahead with this. The difference causes excessive cyclical increase and decrease in the newborn's baby blood gas concentrations if the respiratory rate becomes slowed. Um, okay, I mean, nothing so important there. Circulation ke awale se kuch important baat hai. The blood volume of a neonate immediately after birth is about 300 ml only. But if the infant is left attached to the placenta for a few minutes after birth, or if the umbilical cord is stripped to force blood out of its vessels into the baby, additional uh, 70 to 100 ml of blood can enter in the baby, and then it will be 3 to 400 ml in total. Then during the ensuing few hours, fluid is lost into the neonate tissue space from this blood, and... Uh, I mean, whatever, 300 ml is on average the blood in the newborn baby. And if you talk about the cardiac output, it's about 500 ml per minute. That's the speed uh, and the cardiac output. Arterial pressure at birth is about 70 millimeters systolic and 50. So as opposed to 120, 80 in adults, it is 70, 50 in the baby. But kuch mahino mein, it becomes 90, 60. And uh, in the coming years, it goes to 120, 70 ke kareeb a jata hai. Thik hai? That comes at adolescence. Usse pehle blood pressure kami hota hai mein. Blood characteristics. The red blood cell count in the neonate is about 4 million per cubic millimeter. It is uh, blood 
if this blood is stripped from the cord into the infants, the red blood cell count obviously will go up additional 0.5 to 7.5 million. But okay, um, nothing too important there to remember. Neonatal Juandia, this is important. Uh, bilirubin formed in the fetus can cross the placenta into the mother and may be excreted through the liver of the mother. Immediately after birth, what happens is the only means of uh, you know, uh, getting rid of the neonate bilirubin is through the neonate's own liver, which for the first few weeks is not working fantastically. So basically what happens, it is incapable of conjugating significant quantities of bilirubin because uh, appropriate liver functioning is not this result is that the plasma mein bilirubin concentration will rise and this will lead to jointness and this is called physiological hyperbilirubinemia or physiological jointness of the baby. However, by far the most important abnormal cause, so this is absolutely normal, this is physiological, but abnormally there can be erythroblastosis fatalis which is discussed uh, elsewhere and uski basic details here that there is uh, blastosis of the red blood cell there is rh factor incompatibility between the fetus and the mother so if there is a baby uh, who is born to a mom who is for example rh negative and was previously uh, you know born with an rh positive baby and the second baby will be affected because of the antibodies to the rh so these sort of thing you know a disease called erythroblastosis fatalis that also because there is rupture of red blood cells so there is a lot of uh, bilirubin in the system and liver is not capable of handling that bilirubin so the levels of bilirubin go super high and that leads to joint disease as well okay and uh, fluid balance acid base balance and renal function obviously they are not uh, very mature at the time of birth the rate of fluid intake and fluid excretion in the newborn is seven times as great in relation to the weight so not very important paragraph the rate of metabolism in the infant is higher it's twice as in relation to the body mass in adults which means that twice as much acid is normally produced in the baby okay so there is an acidotic environment functional development of the kidney is not complete until the first month of complete nahi hoti birth ke baad bhi for example the kidneys of the neonate can concentrate uh, urine to only 1.5 times the osmolarity of the plasma so it's not fully functional but with passage of time it gets uh, all right liver function during the first few days of life up tak aapko idea ho gaya hai main bar bar ye baat repeat kar raha hu ki liver is not fully functional so there are problems with bilirubin handling the liver of the neonate conjugate bilirubin with glucuronic acid poorly isi uh, initial few days mein jointis ke chances hote hain because of the liver of the neonate is deficient in forming plasma proteins as well, the plasma protein concentration falls uh, initially in the first few days of life. Gluconeogenesis impaired otai in the early time period. The liver of the neonate usually also forms two little blood factors. So, these are all important features that you should know in uh, reference to with reference to the liver function. So, actually, the whole organ system newborn baby may initially day one pay 100% functional capacity pe nahi hote, obviously and it makes sense digestion absorption and metabolism of energy uh, foods and nutrition ye baat ab hum kai dafa kar chuke hain ki in general the ability of the neonate to digest absorb and metabolize food is not much different from that of the older child lekin kuch exceptions hain jo aapko digestion absorption metabolism ke wale se yaad rakhni hai number 1 Secretion of pancreatic amylase in the neonate is deficient. Isili inki starch handling itni efficient nahi hoti. Number two, absorption of fats from the GI tract is somewhat less as compared to the older child. Okay, so kuch differences hain. Consequently, milk with high fat content such as in the cow's milk is often inadequately absorbed in babies. And number three, because of the liver function imperfectly during at least the first week of life, glucose concentration in the blood is unstable and low. क्योंकि लिवर का काम होता है ब्लड में कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ ग्लूकोज को मेंटेन रखना तो वो प्रॉपर्ली नहीं होता नाउ द न्यूनेट इज स्पेशली कैपेबल ऑफ सिंथेसाइजिंग एंड स्टोरिंग प्रोटीन सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट द न्यूनेट कैन डू इंडीड विद एन एडिकेट डाइट अप टू 90% ऑफ द इंजेस्टेड अमीनो एसिड इज यूज्ड फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन्स व्हिच इज एक्चुअली अ मच हायर परसेंटेज एज वी एंड एज एडल्ट्स कैन डू वो हमसे ज्यादा प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस वो कर सकते हैं स्टोर कर सकते हैं Uh, increased metabolic rate and poor body temperature regulation the normal metabolic rate of the neonate in relation to the body weight is about twice as that of the adult which also accounts for the fact that cardiac output and the minute minute respiratory not the minute wow, by the way i just discovered ke minute minute ek hi cheez hai spelling wise minute respiratory volume are twice as uh, great in relation to the body weight in infant 
सो बेसिकली हार्ट रेट ज्यादा है रेस्पिरेटरी रेट एडल्ट से डिफरेंट है इसीलिए जो मेटाबॉलिक रेट है दैट्स आल्सो डिफरेंट बिकॉज द बॉडी सर्फेस एरिया इज लार्ज इन रिलेशन टू द बॉडी मैस द हीट इज रेडिली लॉस फ्रॉम द बॉडी सो टेम्परेचर रेगुलेशन इज नॉट वेरी गुड ओके now nutritional needs during the early weeks of the life at birth a neonate is usually in complete nutritional balance provided by the mother obviously by the placenta but uh, i mean later on the baby has to feed on itself taki wo apne nutritional status ko um uh, homeostatic rakh sake furthermore the function of the gi system is usually more than adequate to digest and assimilate all the nutritional needs of the infant if appropriate nutrients are provided so gi tract is well formulated however three specific problems occur in the early nutrition of the infant number one need for calcium and vitamin d because the neonate in uh, is in the stage for rapid ossification bones ossification or a a ready supply of calcium throughout the infancy is very much necessary this is ordinarily supplied adequately by the milk however absorption of calcium by the gi tract is poor in the absence of vitamin d therefore within only a few weeks severe rickets can actually develop in the infants those who do not have vitamin d so they need vitamin d as well as calcium because they have bones to ossify uh, number 2 need for iron in the diet if the mother has had adequate amounts of iron in the diet the infant's liver usually has stored enough iron for 4 to 6 month formation of red blood cell iron kyun chahiye baby ko for the formation of red blood cell ab agar maa ki body mein iron levels theek the to baby mein transfer hue honge aur liver ne wo store kar liye honge uh, which are enough for 4 to 6 months however if the mother has had insufficient iron to ab baby mein anemia ho sakta hai uh, as soon as 3 months of life kyunki ab jo iron stores the wo khatam aur naya red blood cell kaise banega um early feeding of infant with egg yolk which contains reasonably large amount of iron or the administration of iron in some other form is desirable if there is severe iron deficiency anemia third problem which is uh, to be faced by the baby early on is vitamin c deficiency ascorbic acid vitamin c is not stored in significant because it's a water soluble vitamin so it is not uh, stored with great quantities however adequate amounts of vitamin c are normally provided in mother's breast milk unless mother has severe vitamin c deficiency which is very rare cow's milk has only 1/4 has vitamin c as human milk in some cases orange juice or other sources of ascorbic acid are prescribed to the infant agar vitamin c deficiency suspected hai so early on ye teen major problems hain first few weeks of life mein number 1 is uh, calcium and vitamin d status number 2 is iron in the diet and number 3 is vitamin c deficiency okay immunity wise kuch baatein mujhe discuss karni hai the neonate inherits a great degree of immunity from the mothers because the protein antibodies are transferred number 1 through the placenta also they are present in the milk in significant amount by the end of the first month the baby's gamma globulins which contain antibodies have decreased to less than half the original level and a corresponding decrease in immunity also happens therefore the baby's own immune system begins uh, after a few months us initial few months ke time period mein jo antibodies transport hoke aayi thi through the placenta they help okay despite the decrease in the gamma globulin soon after the birth antibodies inherited from mother protect the infant for about 6 month kyunki antibodies ka life span hai yani jo antibodies hain jo baby tak pahunch chuki hain they are okay for about 6 months therefore immunization against these diseases before 6 month is usually not required kyunki shuru ke 6 month mein maa se jo antibodies transport hoke aati hain they are enough however the inherited antibodies against whooping cough are normally insufficient isliye immunization mein ye khayal rakha jata hai ki kaun se shots early dene hain kaun se baad mein dene aur uska pura ek schedule hai aur alag alag countries mein ye alag but most of them follow the who schedule uh, jo extended program program of immunization in developing countries hai uh, usko follow karte hain aur vaccinate karte hain bachon ko now allergy newborn infants are seldom subject to allergies uh, very rare allergies in newborns several because they don't have fully formed immune system allergy uh, response ke liye aapko fully fledged immune system bhi to chahiye na several months later however when infants own antibodies first begin to form allergic states can develop क्योंकि अभी ये नया नया बच्चा पैदा हुआ है इसमें अपनी एंटीबॉडीज है ही नहीं तो एलर्जी कैसे ये रिस्पॉन्ड करेगा बट आफ्टर फ्यू मंथ्स सच एस फाइव सिक्स मंथ्स इट स्टार्ट्स मेकिंग इट्स ओन एंटीबॉडीज तो फिर एलर्जी स्टार्ट हो सकती है ओके एंडोक्राइन इश्यूज ऑर्डिनरीली द एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम ऑफ द इन्फेंट इज हाईली डेवलप एट बर्थ एंड इन्फेंट सेल्डम एक्सिबिट एनी इमीडिएट 
endocrine abnormality. So this is one of the rare abnormalities reported. However, the endocrine, unless there is um, a congenital malformation of one of the endocrine glands. So if that issue is, then it's a different thing. Otherwise, like liver is, liver is ill-formed, it is not functional. Because it is not functional, it is why joint is in early times. But okay? endocrine problems are not reported. Nahi hai. If a pregnant mother bearing a female child is treated with an androgenic hormone, or if an androgenic tumor develops during the pregnancy, uh, mother ki baat ho rahi hai, the child will be born with a high degree of masculinization because of the androgens and that uh, usme jo female sexual organs hai, they may hyperproliferate and they can masculinize leading to hermaphroditism. Matlab ye hai, ke they will have the female gender, female gender, but they will also develop uh, genitals which are male looking and that is because of the masculinization of the genitals because of the androgens uh, which are produced in high amount uh, in the mommy now the sex hormones secreted by the placenta and by the mother's gland during pregnancy occasionally cause the neonate's breast to form milk as well now that sometimes happens during the first days of the life sometimes the breast then become inflamed or infectious as well uh, so that is again because there are sex hormones secreted by the placenta uh, by the mother's gland and they transport it to the baby and they cause the effect so yeah, endocrine ke associated issues bata raha aapko. an infant born to an untreated diabetic mother will have considerably hypertrophy and hyperfunction of the eyelids of Langlands of pancreas. As a consequence, uh, jo infant ka blood glucose hai, it may fall to very very low level because zyada eyelids honge, zyada insulin banega, zyada insulin banega to hypoglycemia ho sakta hai. That can happen. Uh, fortunately, in neonate, unlike the adult, insulin shock or coma from this low level of glucose uh, rarely occur because children have the same habit of low glucose. Ki. So, this low glucose is not a big problem in babies. Mein. Maternal type 2 diabetes is the most common cause of large babies, uh, humongous big babies born to diabetic mothers is a common phenomena. Type 2 diabetes in mother is associated with resistance to metabolic effects of insulin and compensatory increase in the plasma insulin concentration. The high levels of insulin are believed to stimulate the fetal growth because that, it, that behave like growth hormone like factors. However, most of the increased fetal weight is due to increased body fat, there is so more lipogenesis basically organomegaly and among the fetuses who do come to term there is a high mortality rate two-thirds of the infant diet succumb to respiratory distress syndrome occasionally a child is born with hypofunctional adrenal cortex uh, resulting from agenesis and exhausting atrophy so if the cortex is not working then you know what are the hormones associated with cortex and they will not be functional if a pregnant woman has hyperthyroidism or is treated with excess thyroid hormone the infant is likely to be born with a temporarily hyposecreting thyroid because these high levels of thyroid are thyroid gland ko suppress kar denge. so baby ka ab thyroid gland itna kaam nahi karega. in a fetus lacking thyroid hormone secretion the bones grow poorly and there is mental retardation called cretin dwarfism so point is that more than the endocrine issues hai, they are there because there was something wrong in the mother as a result of which the baby is now suffering so that sort of thing okay Right, special problems of prematurity, all the problems in neonatal life just noted are severely exacerbated in prematurity. Prematurity ka matlab hai, agar term date se pehle bachcha paida ho jata hai. To ye jitne bhi humne issues discuss ki hai ki liver sahi se kaam nahi kar raha. So, so jab term par 40 weeks of gestation par thik kaam nahi kar raha. To 37 week par usse aur thoda kam kaam karega. Alveoli jo surfactant release kar rahe hain. Phir bhi fully mature agar nahi hai. To wo aur agar bachcha jaldi paida hoga to bilkul hi mature nahi honge. Nervous system jo hai wo fully develop nahi hai. Myelination nahi hui. 40 weeks par nahi hui to 37 weeks pe aur kam hui bhi hogi. So, now we have discussed issues, they exacerbated and further augmented. Hote they can be categorized under two headings. Number one, immaturity of certain organ system. And number two, instability of different homeostatic controls. Now, we have discussed it. Advances in medical care have greatly improved the outcomes of the preterm babies in recent years. One time, hota tha, कि अगर premature baby uh, पैदा हो गया है और पहले किसी जमाने में ऐसे भी होता था यार घरों पे deliveries हो जाती थी अब भी बाज गाओं में गोट में इस तरह की चीजें होती हैं but not in the you know big cities obviously uh, there are hospitals now and the care is very very improved so uh, preterm babies की अब अच्छी खासी care हो जाती है so the survival rate for extremely preterm which is less than 28 weeks that's extreme preterm as compared to the 40 weeks of gestation in fact about 80 to 90% with modern medical care are actually alive so, 
कम टाइम में जो बच्चा पैदा हुआ वो भी सर्वाइव कर जाता है हाउ एवर विद ईच वीक ऑफ शॉर्ट एंड जेस्टेशन बिलो ट्वेंटी एट वीक द सर्वाइवल गोज डाउन एट ट्वेंटी टू वीक्स और लेस प्री टर्म बेबी रेयरली सर्वाइव सो दैट्स दी आई मीन already 28 is too uh, less of a time for the baby to have in the uterus so iska bhi survival itna aasan nahi hai acha health care setup hai to 28 week wala baby shayad survive ho jaye ab do tarah ke problem maine aapko batana immaturity of organ systems uh, almost all the organ system of the body are immature in the premature infant and require particular attention to zahir hai systems abhi theek se bane nahi hai aur uh, respiration mein issue ho sakta hai रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस सिंड्रोम बहुत ही कॉमन हो सकता है इस तरह के बेबीज में देर फॉर द बेबीज हैव टू बी यू नो कंटिन्यूसली मॉनिटर्ड सरफेक्ट एंड सिक्रेशन नहीं होगा उसके अंदर जिसकी वजह से रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस सिंड्रोम होगा जी आई फंक्शन अफेक्टेड होंगे जाहिर है द बेबीज आर प्री मेच्योर तकरीबन दो महीने यू नो ट्वेंटी एट वीक्स आप देख रहे हैं ना तकरीबन टू मंथ्स अर्ली ये पैदा हो गया बेबी एंड द मेजर प्रॉब्लम ऑफ प्री मेच्योर इन्फेंट इज इंजेस्टिंग एंड एब्जॉर्बिंग एडिकुएट फूड इन इन्फेंट्स हुआ बॉन्ड टू मंथ्स प्री मेच्योर द डाइजेस्टिव इन दब्जॉर्बिव सिस्टम आर ऑलमोस्ट ऑलवेज इन एडिकुएट Furthermore, because the absorption of calcium is unusually difficult in premature infants, so that bone के मसले और rickets कितना common होगा इनमें है ना? Further, uh, function of other organs, immaturity of the liver is a problem, immaturity of kidney, blood forming mechanism, so we have a globulin forming mechanisms. All the functions will be. So what you have to do is to monitor the baby with great care, usually in a hospital setting. अच्छा देन देर आर सम होम्योस्टेटिक कंट्रोल सिस्टम विच आर नॉट वर्किंग इन मेच्योरिटी ऑफ द डिफरेंट ऑर्गन सिस्टम इन प्री मेच्योर इन फैंड क्रिएट्स हाई डिग्री ऑफ इनस्टेबिलिटी इन द होम्योस्टेटिक सिस्टम फॉर एग्जाम्पल एसिड बेस बैलेंस आर डिस्टर्ब टेम्परेचर रेगुलेशन आर डिस्टर्ब यू नो एडीमा कैन डेवलप बिकॉज लिवर से प्रोटीन्स नहीं बन रहे किडनीज ठीक काम नहीं कर रही कैल्शियम रेगुलेशन इज अफेक्टेड हाइपो कैल्सियमिक टैटनी ऑल्सो द ब्लड ग्लूकोज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कैन वेरी बिटवीन लो लिमिट्स टू अ वेरी हाई लिमिट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन हाउ द बेबी इज बींग फेड इन स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ बॉडी टेम्परेचर इज अनदर इशू वन इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम ऑफ प्री मेच्योर इन्फेंट इज द इनबिलिटी टू मेंटेन द नॉर्मल बॉडी टेम्परेचर द प्री मेच्योर इन्फेंट्स टेम्परेचर टेन टू अप्रोच दैट ऑफ द सराउंडिंग सो दैट kind of the uh, you know other animals uh, humans tend to maintain their temperature but these babies uh, reach the surrounding temperature at normal room temperature the infant's temperature may stabilize at uh, okay temperature but if the temperature goes high or the temperature goes low then there can be a problem baby is not able to maintain the body temperature danger of blindness caused by excessive oxygen therapy uh, this is another very big problem Now, because premature infants frequently experience respiratory problem they are given oxygen which is what we call the oxygen therapy however excess use of oxygen in treating premature infant especially in early prematurity can lead to blindness because too much oxygen stops the growth of the new blood vessels and when this happens then retina is affected and the person goes blind This condition is known as retrolental fibroplasia, as cause permanent blindness. So, if retina me ko issue aaya, permanent blindness. That's the end of the story for vision. For this reason, it is particularly important to avoid treatment of premature infants with high concentration of respiratory oxygen. Obviously, in hospital settings, if a child is there, so it will be taken care of. So that has to be, uh, you know, considered as an important point. The major physiological problems of the child beyond neonatal period are related to special metabolic needs of the body. Um, अब ये न्यूनिटल पीरियड के बाद की बात चल रही है अंटिल द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी ईयर फॉर एग्जांपल नोट स्पेशली दैट दीज हाइट पैरल ईच अदर सो नॉट द टॉपिक टू बी डिस्कस्ड हियर एट द मोमेंट बिकॉज दे हैव गोन अप टू वेरी वेरी आई वुड से एल्डरली एज ट्वेंटी ईयर्स तक चले गए बिहेवियरल ग्रोथ बिहेवियर ग्रोथ इज प्रिंसिपली रिलेटेड टू मेच्योरिटी ऑफ द नर्वस सिस्टम इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू डिसोसिएट मेच्योरिटी ऑफ द एनाटॉमिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द नर्वस सिस्टम फ्रॉम द मेच्योरिटी कॉज बाई द ट्रेनिंग Anatomical studies suggest uh, they show that certain major tracts in the central nervous system are not completely myelinated until the end of the first year. For this reason, it is frequently stated that the nervous system is not fully functional at birth. The brain cortex and its associated functions, such as vision, seem to require several months, and this is very normal. आप सबके घरों में बच्चे होंगे. आप start का बच्चा देखें, वो आपको देख तो रहा होता है, लेकिन उसको clearly आप नजर शायद नहीं आ रहे होते हैं. Because you know, higher centers, the cortical higher centers, they develop in the first year of life, and then the myelination happens in the ascending, descending major tracts uh, during the first year. So, बच्चे को पैदा होने के बाद nervous system stable होते 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 साल भर लग जाता है, 
और इसी साल में उसका बिहेवियरल ग्रोथ होती है पर्सनालिटी उसकी बनना शुरू होती है एट बर्थ द इन्फेंट ब्रेन मैस इज ओनली अबाउट ट्वेंटी ऑफ द ब्रेन मैस इन एडल्ट एंड फिफ्टी फाइव ईयर एट वन ईयर बट इट रीच इज ऑलमोस्ट दी एडल्ट पोर्शन बाई द एंड ऑफ द सेकंड ईयर सो सेकंड ईयर पर उसका ब्रेन मास एक एडल्ट जैसे रेशो पर आ जाता है दिस प्रोसेस ऑल्सो एसोसिएटेड विद क्लोजर ऑफ द फॉन्टेनेल्स द फ्यूचर्स ऑफ द स्कल विच अलाउज ओनली ट्वेंटी ऑफ एडिशनल ग्रोथ बाई द एंड ऑफ द सेकंड ईयर a comparison of this chart was not uh, going to do the comparison so that's basically it and we finish congratulations the reproductive physiology we are just done with so many chapters which were part of endocrine physiology or endocrine physiology ke last ke jo char panch chapter the they belong to particularly reproductive physiology unit 14 humne gaiten ka complete kar liya so that's bit success aur agar aap uh, mere sath ye sare lectures dekh rahe hain so all the very best mujhe comment mein batao zarur ki agla unit kaun sa start karu mere paas neuro physiology ki bahut zyada request aa rahi hai so confirm kare ki next unit mujhe kaun sa start karna chahiye fir milta hu agli video mein yaar apna khayal rakhna